Welcome back, Zero K fans, and Anna is it done? This is Shadow Fury 333, remaining your host, and now we're on to El Torero versus Yurga on Battle for Planet 14, not 17. I might have said 17 before, this is Planet 14. I don't know why, I'm guessing that this is also one of Forbes maps, so this is one of the Forwarding Angel Evo RTS. Super feature heavy maps, although thankfully unlike Fetid Marsh, it's not quite as slow, it actually runs at a decent clip. Fetid Marsh was just painfully slow. Mind you, I think there was actually some settings that I had a bit too high that normally I wouldn't notice and were causing a problem here. And I might have I might have edited those settings that might just now be a matter of configuration. Regardless, let's get to the game itself. So, El Torero going for gunships and Yurga going for Amphib, which is an interesting choice given that this map doesn't have a whole lot of water on it. This is not easily pathed to, not really pathed inside. I think hoverers might be able to go over it, but I don't I don't know. Amphibs can't really go in it, though. It's not... I can even show you. Where's the Amphib? There's Amphib. Amphib, yeah, it's purple. Purple all around. That means you cannot path into it. El Torero, on the other hand, going for gunships, which makes sense. This is a very large and very open map, but large... And in a way, that really doesn't give a whole lot of rush distance for ground compared to air. But it's big enough you can get away with air. That's the thing with bigger maps in 1v1. Airplay is something you can really get away with. Whereas you guy going for the reclaim play, trying to get rid of all these trees. And admittedly, that's not a whole lot of energy. This is like these trees aren't worth a whole lot to avoid un to just avoid imbalance. I'm not really sure. I guess it's just because to, for it's for being decorative. So these tend not to be worth very much. These rocks are okay for value, but still, it's like this entire field of rocks is only a few hundred, maybe. Yeah. Not a whole like a few hundred, it's not bad. But right now, El Torero is going to be at a much, much bigger advantage when it comes to just harassing everything. Get rid of conches, which is the thing to do. You want to, I mean, the conches, yeah, they're building up metal extractors. You want to get rid of the metal extractors, but they're also reclaiming like mad. This one right here, I'd actually say, is the bigger one to get rid of. Also, the easier one to get rid of, but hey, get rid of everything. This banshee looks like it's going over. Yeah, it will fly over the conch over the north. That will work nicely. So El Torero at a very major advantage. And have the crane up, I was about to say, if they get a crane up, that's going to be huge, given the size of this map. It's going to be very easy for them to get around and just mess with everything. And this conch is dead. That's even more reclaim that's not going to happen. So Yurga right now is having a bit of a tough time. They're being hit very hard, and El Torero is going to be able to just... As soon as their crane starts doing something... Where's the crane going off to, anyway? Oh, it's over here, getting radar. Prudent choice. You always want to know what's going on. So right, I mean, El Torero, at this point, Raider's not that much. El Torero kind of knows what's going on around their base. Yurga also knows. Both players kind of are aware, but El Torero has a much, much more powerful way of acting. Whereas Yurga is just... the hell? Okay. Yurga is not in that same position. Yurga is in a position where they, they could attack. I mean, they could come in with a lot of ducks. Five or six ducks when there's no ground army to deal with them, and just Banshees, and the Banshees get hit pretty hard, that could be tough. That would be a hard challenge to get through. Right? For El Torero, that is. If Yurga can get in with these ducks. And they, if they can get rid of the Banshees, that's the thing. The Banshees, those Banshees need to live and need to harass, because right now, El Torero is actually ahead in metal. They're ahead, but they need to maintain that lead. And more importantly, they're forcing Yurga to stay in their base defensively. That is huge. El Torero can just go anywhere. They And they are. But yeah, they can expand wherever they want. I think a nice, nice radar over here, too, just to know if anything's going to be built up over to the southwest. But yeah, El Torero is just keeping Yurga scared. The soft contain going on, and that is a very powerful tool. So El Torero knows exactly what Yurga's up to. They know exactly what's going on around the southwest. They know what's going on near their base. They don't know the northeast. Yurga could be expanding there. They aren't, but they could be. And they are keeping Yurga scared. But Yurga right now looks like they are no longer scared. They're just going to go for it. And this is the point where that's actually probably going to pay off. The Rapier's coming in. There's going to need to be a lot of them to deal with the ducks. They can hit and run nicely, but they're still going to be hit hard by ducks. The Banshees, on the other hand, stand no chance against these ducks. Yeah, there we go. That's one volley, barely taking any damage. Banshees can deal a lot of damage, but 
And why is this one not attacking? Oh, okay, there we go. I mean, like I said, they're still it's still keeping Yorga scared. Still keeping Yorga from being able to do too much, but the ducks are no longer afraid. And Yorga right now doesn't have... What do they have? They have one rapier? That's nothing. There's nothing to be afraid of here. Yorga can just waltz right in. Oh. Flips to pointing out Yorga stalling energy. They are, that's true, but they aren't stalling metal. They need to get more energy, but they haven't got to the point where they're excess... Sorry, not stalling. They aren't excessing metal, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. My... The bigger concern I would have would be just all the workers being destroyed and everything. Getting energy is good, though. They, they should do that as soon as they can. But I don't disagree with what they're doing right now. I will disagree with it very shortly, though, because they're reclaiming and they don't have enough energy. They should be reclaiming more energy, not that that's easy to do in this map. And it looks like... Wait, where have Yorga's forces gone? Oh! Shoot, I miss Yorga's forces getting destroyed? What? No, there's a... That destroyed one, two of them. The Stardust destroyed two of those ducks, but it looks like the rest of them just... Retreated. That's weird. No, they're being produced. What the... Darn it! How did I miss that? I was focusing so much on the economy, I didn't even notice that... Something happened. Oh, rapiers happened. Okay, never mind. Rapiers actually are scarier than I thought. Oops, should have double-checked the damage numbers there. That couldn't have destroyed all of them, could it have? Well, that's... No, these are both one duck each. Well, at any rate... No, that... That was... 1,500? Yeah, okay. At this point, yeah, El Torero has managed to take advantage of the fact that they were scary enough. And, oh, okay, I guess this is something like this happened. The ducks hitting a fortified position and it's getting destroyed one by one. Yeah, Yoruga right now, they weren't afraid, but they should have been. However, they have power. Not Still not enough. Still not quite enough. And the gunship, like, this is the thing, is that, okay, air is coming in, which is going to be a bit of a pain, but tridents were already being built. So it isn't going to be that much of a problem for El Torero to deal with Yorga's forces. Like, El Torero right now has got tridents somewhere. Or I thought they did. Okay, maybe they don't. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they do not have tridents, but that's not the point. The point is they can easily get tridents. And more to the point, they have the map. Yoga right now, in order to get back from this, is basically going to need to find some way of smashing over in either this southwest area, or maybe the central area. The main base is going to be too well defended. There's no... Actually, it's not that well defended. Mm, too... No, it's well... It's too well defended. And even the southwest section, it has a Stardust... There's a Stardust on this ramp. That's a big problem to deal with. So it's coming in, hopefully, to get some harassment and possibly to get the army destroyed. I mean, at this point, El Torero is so far ahead economically that it's hard for Yorga to decide what to deal with. Like, do they want to destroy the economy first? Do they want to destroy the military first? I mean, they're heading all these things. I think Yorga's... Okay, they're going for the economy. Stop El Torero from expanding, and that's... Is that going to work? I don't think it's going to work. This race is going to be up way too quickly. El Torero's commander is not threatened by this. And the rapiers coming in will probably pose a problem there. So this is just harassment for the economy. But there's so much economy to harass. This is not easy. It's far from easy. One rapier down, but these swifts cannot engage. Which means Yorga cannot engage. Which means that Yorga is in a position where they basically have no way of getting up above plus 30 metal. I mean, they can reclaim. But they don't have, like, they use up a lot of their safe reclaim, and there's still more reclaim, because I mentioned before, metal reclaim is actually pretty valuable. Energy reclaim, not so much, but there are a lot of rocks in this map. So Yorga can use those and get back in that way. But the problem is, this entire game, they've been messed up. Every time they've tried to do that, they've lost the worker in question. Either Banshees or now Rapiers and, of course, Tridents. Like I said, there we are. There's the Tridents. And... 
And with the Swiss, I mean, the Swiss can sort of help, but they're not not doing enough. It's not one pass to get rid of... There we go. Get rid of that metal extractor. Get rid of as many as they can. At least try to stem the tide. If Yoda can get some reclaim going, they should be able to at least somewhat even it out. These do have 7.5 metal build power. So at least that way... Ooh, and down go most of those Swifts. That is dangerous. The Tridents can go down, but still, it doesn't matter. Yoga realizes there's no way they're getting back in here, which I don't totally agree with. I still think Reclaim would have given them a bit of a shot, but it would have been a very, very tough uphill battle, regardless. So yeah, Battle for Planet 14. That was interesting. That was a bit... Not as taxing on my computer as I thought it would be, but definitely interesting. Goes to show how much you can get away with with air, especially if you make your opponent scared. I think Yorga might have had an easier time if they hadn't reclaimed early, though. It's kind of weird to say, but yeah. Might have helped a bit. Anyway, that is got that match. So there's going to be another one. And people pointing out, talking about Amph AA. Amphibious Anti-Air is fairly powerful, but it does have the main weakness that it isn't super it it relies on kind of being underwater it it goes into water surfaces fires goes back down it's harder to hit that way and i'm pretty sure it's balanced around that i'd have to double check the stats but it's basically i'm pretty sure it's just not as strong and not as strong or not as tough okay it deals a fair amount of damage it's just that it's not let's see what's his health Okay, 200 metal, 1100 health, 600 damage. Okay, it's not terrible. Yeah, it's just, it's not, like, compared to some of the other anti-air you can get, it's not the best. Like, tridents are arguably the best. They're 270 metal, but, yeah, they're 900, 900 HP, but they're in the air, so dealing with them can be difficult. 600 damage in three missiles. Which, it's kind of a question of what you're fighting, because, like, gunship, the thing is anti-gunship is even harder, because they have more health. Anti-aircraft, it's, like, you have to get past the 800 health of a Raven, or I think the 600 health of a Swift. Uh, there's certain thresholds you have to deal with, and with gunship, those thresholds increase, which makes it harder. But yeah, I think the main issue, well, DPS is 50. Yeah, Swifts have oh, Swifts have 300 health, so that's the thing. He's got, you have certain thresholds. Oh, Ravens have 1,000 health? Oh, right, they only 100 damage, 1,000 health. But regardless, like, Flail is a really good one. It's a bit expensive, but 75 damage per second and 1,300 health. You have, it's another, a common one, another one is Crasher, which is cheaper, but deals, like, 73 damage per second. 50 damage per second for anti-air isn't very high. It's actually, for for anti-air that exists in this game, it's fairly low. Even for $200, it's... Or $200, $200 in metal. What game am I playing? $200 metal. It's still not great. Like, the most comparable one is Gremlin at 61 damage per second at 150 metal. It has 550 health, but still, that's... Even that kind of outperforms. So anyway, that's that match. Oh, and of course, Amphib is also kind of slow. That's the other problem. So yeah, it really is... It's kind of a trap you put in the water. But anyway. On to the next game, which is going to be... Kshatria versus Rymark on Trojan Hills. So that'll be up in a couple seconds. So stay tuned for that. Or minutes. Minute or so. Give it a minute. 